Good evening, everybody. I'd like to uh, thank you for coming on to our first webinar when um, in this stormy evening across the Dakotas and into Minnesota. Um, it's been a very tough spring for everybody, uh, and I appreciate it. Uh, tonight, I have uh, myself, Guy Halverson, and Dr. Jacob Carlson here, and we're going to talk about um, BVD and how that impacts your cattle herds and and how you can identify those animals to clear them up. Um, I'll see if I can get my screen to advance here. There you we go. Um, like I said, Dr. Carlson is with me tonight. I'm Guy Halverson, Beef Director for Stockman Supply. Um, this cartoon kind of hit home to me. Uh, it's two cowboys uh, arguing over what time to go have a duel after a fight. And time is so valuable to everybody. Um, whether you're in livestock production or business of any way, it's how you utilize your time every day. And taking the time to manage your operations is very important. So as we go through this, we can talk about um, things that will make a difference in your operations every year. So a little about Stockman Supply. We've been uh, in the livestock supply business for many, many years, starting in West Fargo in 1956. Um, as of July of 2016, we were acquired by Animart LLC out of Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Uh, the Animart division is mainly a dairy focus group. We're the beef focus group. Um, as of the 1st of March, actually, we also acquired a animal diagnostic laboratory out in Portland, Oregon, called Animal Profiling International. Um, they've been in business since 2015. Um, no, I think longer than that. Yes, for about 15 years, excuse me. Um, they've tested over 4 million animals for BVD for uh, persistent inf infected BVD animals. So they do some other tests, a lot of things in the dairy world, mastitis. Um, they do Yoni's blood testing, um, pregnancy testing through milk or blood, um, all sorts of different things. But we're going to focus tonight on uh, per persistent infected BVD. I put together an agenda of kind of some questions that we're going to answer here tonight. Uh, what is a PI BVD animal? How do I end up with a PI BVD animal in my herd? What effects does a PI BVD animal cause? What does a BVD PI animal cost you as a producer? What animals should I test for? How does uh, PI BVD testing work? What do I do with a positive PI BVD animal? Will I see a positive return on a PI BVD testing? What does PIBVD testing cost? And then we'll have a question and answer session. Uh, on your screen, you'll be able to raise your hand. We can unmute you and you should be able to talk back and forth to us. So, um, What is a PIBVD animal? Uh, a PIBVD animal is an animal uh, possibly living in your herd that is persistently infected with bovine di viral diarrhea. Uh, infection of the unborn calf happens between 30 and 120 days of pregnancy and will result in becoming a persistent infected or PI with BVD virus if the calf is not aborted, if it lives through that uh, pregnancy to term. Uh, if a calf is not PI at birth, it'll never become a persistent infected animal in nature. It's, it's it's infected in as a fetus, it comes out and then it's persistently infected for the rest of its life. These PI animals can uh, never be cured of the disease, but will shed BVD to other animals of the group. Um, this next picture shows basically how the two different ways that a calf becomes a PI BVD carrier. Um, the first way is as the cow is, is pregnant, she becomes um, in contact with BVD virus from another source. A neighbor's cow herd, uh, deer, elk, sheep, goats, all those things carry BVD. 
So it's out in nature. Those viruses are out there. Uh, if you have uh, nose to nose contact over fence, um, that, that can infect that fetus with the BVD virus. That's the most common route. It, over 90% of them of the PI BVD calves become that way through the cow being exposed to the BVD virus. Uh, the other way is if a PI BVD calf becomes a cow. Every calf that cow will have will be a PIBVD animal. There is uh, no way that calf can be born without being PI um, out of a cow that is a persistent infected animal. So what effects does a PIBVD animal cause if you have one floating around in your herd? You can have increased death loss, um, increased treatment rate, Decreased fertility. It, it messes with fertility in your cow herd and it, it loses you money, basically. All those costs, death, death rates, all that add up. And then your reputation as a producer, um, whether you're a seed stock producer or um, a cow calf guy selling feeder calves out on the market, you want a very good reputation to have good performing cattle in the feed yard. Uh, if you have a PIBVD animal in there, that's that's definitely gonna affect performance. Um, what effects does a PIBVD animal cause? Um, like I said before, that animal is floating around in your herd, spreading BVD, challenging vaccines in your herd, uh, your reproductive vaccines in your cow herd, uh, your five-way virals, your BVD fraction of that in your feeder cattle. Um, herd bulls can actually become affected to cows when they're breeding, if they're breeding a PI animal. So you wanna have a really good vaccination protocol and program, um, but if you have a persistent infected BVD animal living within your herd, they're always challenging the immune system of everything around them. What's the cost of having one of these persistent infected animals in your herd? Um, uh, cow calf operation, twenty to thirty dollars per exposed animal across that herd on increased treatments, reproduction, and death loss. So in a four hundred cow herd, that could be a minimum of eight thousand bucks that it costs. Um, a positive feedlot animal, twenty five to forty dollars a head, um, increased treatments and death loss. So if you're running a thousand feeder cattle, that could be twenty five thousand dollars or more. So, and across the entire beef industry in the United States, it's a one and a half to two and a half billion dollar impact a year. Um, so it, it does add up in operation and it is an issue. <clears throat> what animals should you test? Um, and Dr. Carlson, you can kind of add in on this too. Uh, all your, your calves basically at turnout or branding time um, and then remember, if you have a negative calf, you know the cow is negative. So you basically get, and you test your calves when you have a negative calf, you know the cow is negative because a PI cow always has a PI calf. So you wanna keep that in mind. You kind of get a bonus when you test because that cow herd um, will be clean when you know the calves are, are clean. Uh, any cows that have lost a calf, um, why, why did a cow become open? Why did she slough a fetus? Could it be BVD? Could it be something else? Um, so you wanna test those. Um, any, any open cows that come in um, in, the, in the fall or, or if, they, if they're pregnant in the fall and they lose their fetus from then until calving, you wanna test those cows. Um, introducing new cattle into the herd. So if you buy replacement heifers, if you buy a group of cows, it'd be a good idea to test those um, to make sure they're not persistently infected animals coming in. And then bulls, don't forget about them. They also should be tested. Um, we were talking the first year, if you introduce a testing program into your herd, you should look at those replacement heifers. Um, those should also be tested. <clears throat> So how does the testing work? Um, we're selling a BVD or PI BVD testing kit. Um, it consists of a 5 ml red top blood tube 
those are prescriptions. Uh, we have Dr. Carlson here. If he has a vet patient client relationship, he can prescribe those, or we can call your local veterinarian and, and get a prescription for them. Um, we also include an instruction package. So it's all the instructions you need from taking the sample to packing it up and getting it shipped out. Um, we provide an ice pack and then a prepaid shipping box pre-addressed to the lab. Uh, you will you will just drop it in the mail when you're done. Um, some extra tools or items that you're going to need is a medium ear notcher or a three eighths inch uh, ear punch. Uh, if you're concerned about having the notch, we also can get you a, a three eighths punch that just puts a hole into it. Um, you need a disinfectant such as Novasan or Chlorhexidine or something like that, and then three uh, rinse and disinfectant buckets. So you'll need those, those things to test. Um, you collect the ear notch sample from, the, from each calf. Um, you want to triple rinse that tool, a clean water bucket into disinfectant, into a clean water, and then you're ready to test the next animal. Um, so you want to make sure that you keep that uh, disinfectant um, regimen up because you do not want to spread uh, BVD between animals or, or other disease. Um, you would want to record the tag number. Uh, on a sh we, we come with a sheet of paper that has the, the blood tube number and then the tag number. You want to record that. Uh, we ask we, you don't put the, the tag number on the blood tube because of handwriting issues and the length of some of the numbering systems out there. And also these samples can be stored for up to six months in a freezer. So if you're doing smaller groups and you want to wait to the end to send them in, we can do that as well. Um, how to organize those blood tubes in a box. You label them one through a hundred or how many um, you get. And you basically put them in those rows as descriptive on the screen. Um, just for orderness when it comes into the lab for testing. Uh, big thing is packing it right. If you get a, a kit from us, uh, put it back in the sample box and wrap them up with uh, like saran wrap, a plastic wrap, um, so they stay secure in that box. Uh, you wanna make sure the ice pack is close to the tubes and there's also uh, packing paper on them. <clears throat> So if you have a positive animal, how does that work? What do you do with it? Um, you can sell those at a local auction market. Um, you are required to disclose that that animal is a persistent infected BVD positive. Uh, you don't want to just unwillingly pass that problem on to another producer. Uh, it's a good idea to disclose that. You can also quarantine that animal, and if it makes it to slaughter, it is safe for human consumption. Um, you can do that. Some of these animals, uh, they go a long time into life and never really show signs or symptoms of the disease, uh, but they are shedding it to others. And then there's always the option to euthanize that animal uh, so it stops the shed of, of those, that virus to everything else. We see a, a positive return for doing the testing. Um, according to Superior Livestock, a producer can expect an additional up to $2 a hundred for uh, BVD free feeder calves, PI BVD free calves. Uh, this is a very good bargaining tool when you're negotiating contracts with order buyers, things like that, um, you know, to up the value. There's vaccination programs out there from uh, different uh, pharmaceutical companies. This is another tool you can use to up the value of your calves to make sure that when they hit the feed yard, they're gonna perform the way that feed yard wants them to. And then if you're a seed stock producer, what's your reputation worth? Um, you wanna provide the, the healthiest, cleanest bulls, heifers, um, seed stock animals that you can. That, that's hard to put a value on that. Your reputation means everything. Um, we also will provide a certificate of PI BVD free. Um, we do have two different options there, feeder cattle. Uh, we can put, I think it's 60 tag numbers per certificate. You get that back. It's signed off by Dr. Carlson at that 
group of cattle with those tag numbers are PIBBD free at that time of testing. Um, and then we'll also do individual animal certificate for seed stock animals, including registration number, tattoo number, um, things like that, tag number, lot number. Um, and you will need to provide an Excel uh, template back to us of those numbers so we can merge them into the, into the certificates. Um, so what does it cost? So basically the way the, the tests work is um, they pool 25 to 28 animals into a group and do a um, PCR, is it, pool test. Um, and that runs $3.15 per animal is, is our full retail price on it. And then if you have a positive out of that pool test, uh, they come back and do a BBD ELISA test, and that costs $2.25 for each one of those 25 or to 28 animals of that group to pinpoint which one it is. The reason they do the pool test and the, the positive resource basically is to um, narrow down cost. It's a lot faster and cheaper to do that through the lab. Um, it's very accurate. There's some labs out there that I've been told do up to 100 head so, um, in a pool. So uh, accuracy is very good between 25 and 28 animals. Um, this test, like I said, includes the blood tube instruction packs, ice pack, and we also pay the shipping out to the lab through the postal service. So if you're a long ways from uh, North Dakota, we can ship you the samples. You uh, take them, throw them in the mail, and they'll go out to the lab. Um, should have your results back in four to six business days. Um, we are doing an introductory offer this spring. Uh, if you buy your branding supplies um, of vaccines, five viral, viral Clostridial Pastorella, um, and then you will get your uh, test basically for $2 a head for that pool test of 25 to 28 animals. Um, positive confirmations are down to buck 95. And again, we don't charge for the collection tubes. Um, so we, we do have an introductory offer for this. It is new to us um, and, and we're kind of excited to offer this out to people. Uh, this is a recap of our introductory offer. Um, so, like I said, two bucks for the pool and then positive resource at $1.95. Here's some ordering information. Uh, feel free to call into our retail location, um, toll free number or on, on the website. Dr. Jacob Carlson's information is located there for technical questions. And then we do have um, our field reps listed there too. Um, Randy Coles down in Nebraska, Derek Jelms in uh, Minnesota, Sam Sledes in Eastern North Dakota, um, Joe Grotzen in Central North Dakota, and then Greg Kopp in Western North Dakota. So I'll open this up for questions. I guess I just make it, this is uh, Jacob Carlson. I just want to make a couple comments uh, regarding our BBD testing program that we're looking at. Um, we have to realize that there's really three cornerstone steps on a, a BBD PI control program. You know, it's vaccination, biosecurity, and testing. Uh, they will work together and every, every herd is different. Um, you know, we do a risk assessment per, for each herd that we work with here. And we use a, a web tool, it's a bbdconsult.com that has a wealth of information that's peer reviewed. Uh, so it's really good information, mm -hmm. answers a lot of questions. So if you could, uh, it, again, that's bbdconsult.com. I mean, BBD is a really big subject to wrap your mind around. But we're hoping to uh, make this uh, easier for people to to do. So I guess um, when we're looking for BVD, it isn't evenly distributed amongst herds. Um, so if we look at the U.S. beef cattle population of about 30 million head, 
we're looking for between 30 and 60,000 DVD PI animals spread across the herds, but they're not evenly distributed amongst the herds. So about one in 10 herds have BVD animals. And that would imply that if we find a herd of BVD, we're probably gonna find more than one animal. We may find a few. So that's why the um, risk assessment tool on the BVD consult website is important for us. If you'd like to type questions in the chat box, um, we do have that up and open. Um, if not, that's all the information we have for tonight. I thank everybody for attending. Uh, feel free to call any of our field reps or into our retail location with questions. So we'll hang on a few minutes. If not, that's what we have to present for tonight. Thank you.